Hello, this is Summer Esso, blogger and podcaster at fashajourney.com, which is an unauthorized chronicle of real results from using Ashley Black's Fascia Blaster tools. For every podcast that I do, I also do a blog post. Blog posts going to have pictures, videos. You definitely want to go there. No matter where you're listening to this podcast, be it Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, you can look in the show description and there will be a link to this particular blog post. Today's topic is the Fascia Blaster for Cellulite. Very sexy topic. Everyone wants to know about it. So let's talk. I certainly don't think that reducing the appearance or diminishing cellulite is the main selling point of the fascia blaster. It's not the main thing that drew me to it, but it is what Ashley Black, the creator of the fascia blaster tools, has led with in marketing it to the mass population. And I'm just going to kind of riff off that. She wrote a book, right? A best-selling book called The Cellulite Myth. Um... And she's really worked that angle. So I decided to start there too. I figure why not? That's where she started. And I didn't really have that bad of cellulite when I started this. In fact, I wouldn't have even thought of it as a problem. I just had some dents on the back of my legs and they were only visible when I bent over. So like, I didn't care that much because like I never saw them. So um, it wasn't a selling point for me. However, when I was working on my body, I figured, why not? We'll, we'll try. I'll use her methods to try and reduce this cellulite. And when I learned what cellulite actually is, I was very interested to diminish the cellulite because cellulite is actually unhealthy fascia. And we're going to talk about that today. So I used the methods that she described and I got really amazing results. It's not overnight. It takes a while and it's a lot more work and time than I thought it was going to be, but I was very impressed with the results. This particular post is not going to be about results. It's just introducing the concept of what cellulite is with respect to the fascia blaster and all the different types of cellulite you can have. It's more of an informational post. So I post every week on Tuesdays, a blog post and a podcast at the same time. And next week's podcast episode will be about my results with respect to cellulite from using this the fascia blaster but today we're just going to go over the information about cellulite so let's start with the question what is cellulite like what is it actually and like I said before I found out from Ashley Black that it's actually unhealthy fascia so your fascia is your connective tissue in your body and that's what cellulite actually is. So it's areas where the fascia is unhealthy and it has actually adhesed, meaning stuck to something else in the body. And that's what makes that bumpy effect. If you have the bumpy kind of cellulite, I actually put a video in the, in the blog post about um, how the fascia, if it's tight and it's stuck to something, the fat just kind of pushes out, bubbles up on the either side of where the fascia is and that's what makes a bumpy appearance but not all cellulite is bumpy right like the kind I thought I had <laughs> before I started fascia blasting was the kind that has dents right it wasn't like a bumpy thing it just had these weirdo dents when I bent over but there are actually four different kinds of cellulite and it turns out that I actually at, at some point I had all these types of cellulite so on my blog post I actually put pictures of the four types of cellulite on my body. These are my own pictures, my own, I just grabbed them from my progress pictures that I've taken throughout the process of using the fascia blaster. So as I mentioned before, Ashley Black wrote a best-selling book called The Cellulite Myth. And the tagline of the book is about how the cellulite is not fat, it's fascia, right? And in the book, she outlines four different types of cellulite. And the truth is that you don't really need to know which type of cellulite you have to work on it. I mean, the, the prescription is the same for all the types of cellulite. It's like, rub the fascia blaster over it. But the way that I found it helpful is that it can kind of give you a preview, like some different kinds of cellulite 
they progress differently as you work on them. Some of them take longer to clear. Some of them are going to go through different phases before they are smoothed out. And so I felt like it was helpful to just sort of assess which kinds of cellulite that I had. Turned out that at some point in time, I've had all four. And so I have those photos, as I mentioned, on the blog post. So the first one, okay, another aside. I have already stated that I find Ashley Black's nomenclature, the way that she names these particular phenomena is cringy. It's cringy, you guys. It's so cringy. I'm embarrassed that I have to speak uh, with some kind of level of authority about things that are named this, but what can I do? It's already named. She named it. So we're going to work with it. We're going to go with it. I'm going to get over it. (sighs) Okay. The first kind is called hail damage. So hail damage is that like bumpy kind that you see. It's lumpy. It's bumpy throughout. Um, And this one actually is the quickest to fix because the fascia is only unhealthy at the surface level, right? You've got, you've got fascia running through um, the entire, actually fascia runs off throughout your muscles even, but there's a particular layer that we're usually working with when we're working with the fascia blaster. But the damage here is the the unhealthy fascia is more at the surface level. So it's a little bit quicker to fix. However, it bruises a lot as it's being fixed. So that's something to definitely think about and know that it's coming and be aware of it. Okay, the next kind is called, ah, thanks Ashley, car wreck. So car wreck is the kind I talked about having on the back of my legs. It's the dense the lines, the divots um, in the skin. These are very pronounced. You definitely notice these. And with these, the damage is a little bit deeper. So it's more of a process to fix. It takes a while. Um, You definitely have to use um, advanced techniques to to do it, what, what she calls refining techniques. But you can't just start refining techniques off the bat, right? You have to work through the surface layers. They have to be restored before you can start working deeper. So that's what makes it a whole process. It does take a while. Um, My big results that I got was over the course of two years is when it really, to me, I feel like to where it really became night and day. I saw improvement along the way, but the big results that I will show pictures of in my next blog post are of a two-year span. So that's a pretty long time. The next kind is called gummy bear. OMG. You guys, gummy bear. (sighs) I'm so annoyed I have to call it gummy bear, but I'm also annoyed because gummy bear is the kind of fascia that I actually bought the fascia blaster for. I bought it for my belly. So I'm the kind of person who's basically pretty thin all over, but I have a belly and I've never really understood it. I have had it since I was seven. (laughs) It's just there. It's a big mass. It's a clump. And, um, and this is why I bought it. I thought maybe something can help me with my belly because nothing's helping. I, even when I get very skinny, um, I usually weigh about 155 and I've gotten down to like 133. And I swear to God, you guys, at 133, I still had this weird belly with like a mass of something. There's like a mass of something in there. <laughs> um, so... I've put some very sexy pictures of my gummy bear belly fascia in the blog post. So let's tell you what gummy bear is. Gummy bear, they call it gummy bear because it feels gummy. There's no muscle definition. You can't even really access the muscles. My stomach muscle, my abs are very weak um, and they've atrophied. Uh, It's a lot of atrophied muscles, fat and fluid clumped together. It feels like a clump. Um, and it's, it's not, it wasn't bumpy like cellulite. It was just a clump. And this one, this kind gets worse before it gets better for sure. So what worse before better means is that you have a big mass of fascia, 
that is this clump that we're talking about and as you work on it it breaks into smaller clumps and smaller clumps until it becomes smooth but as it breaks into clumps it starts to look like what I thought of as cellulite before I started this process it starts to look bumpy and weird it's it's not good it's not good you guys but you can take a look at it because here after working a lot on my belly I did get those changes right it started to get bumpy like that and I put a picture of it in the blog post so because we have all those atrophied muscles it's really good one to activate the muscles so clench the muscles as part of the process either while you're fascia blasting or afterward to start to really wake those muscles up get the blood flow into them and um, I did notice that with this one I will do a later post that is just about the progress that I've made on my belly but one thing I will say is that the muscles did at one point sort of come online and I felt them they were cramp they would cramp if I was just like getting out of bed <laughs> and I would get out of bed and I'd be like Ooh, that and it just it would just seize up and hold right on its own which to me I could be wrong but I think that's the muscles waking up and coming online and I still have that happen today so I consider that progress it's a little weird but I consider it progress so the next type is called beyond bound so beyond bound cellulite it's interesting it's really interesting because this is what I had the most of like on my upper legs um, and it's really common in people who are athletic I'm, I'm I wouldn't describe myself as athletic necessarily but I am a very active person and so what it is is that the fascia is so tight that you can't even like pinch or pull up on the skin so healthy fascia you're going to be able to pinch and move around a lot and unhealthy fascia is I'm trying to find some on my body because I'm doing the blog on YouTube as well now um, where it's unhealthy I found some on my arm is where you can pinch it and you can't you can't get a small amount you just get a big clump of something you can't even pick it up because it's all bound into one sheet right and this cellulite is actually the least healthy type so it it's weird because it doesn't look bad like I had this on my upper legs and it didn't look bad in fact as you break up the chunks you get the worse before better thing right where it starts to look lumpy and bumpy before it smooths out but before that it was totally smooth right because that that clump was just all stuck there so it's not healthy fascia but it doesn't look bad so it's kind of hard to wrap your mind around and this type takes the longest to fix and so that's why still to this day I still sort of go through layers on my upper legs it's been three years and my legs look pretty good right now actually but I still bruise a lot I still get the bruises still working through I'm still working on it three years later but I will say that it looks better I have more access to the muscles because it was all bound up like that you can't really it's not as bad as the quote-unquote gummy bear kind right where the muscles are truly atrophied you can't even access them at all it's not as bad as that but they just the muscles look so much more defined and um, nice when you have broken through the beyond bound so that's why like my hail damage picture if you go to the blog post at fasciajourney.com the hail damage picture is actually me working through the worst before better from beyond bound right so it started as beyond bound it was a total sheet of smooth I broke it up I got the hail damage I got it bumpy and then now it's smooth again so that is the beyond bound type of cellulite and this one really does take the longest to fix on the blog post I also included a video of Ashley Black showing the different kinds of cellulite on a bunch of different bodies right because everybody's gonna look a little bit different I included pictures of my own body but it's cool to look at some others and kind of determine what kind do I have and I like this a lot I really like that I'm starting here with this because if you're thinking about getting into fascia blasting and you haven't tried it yet I think you should really educate yourself I didn't do that 
I did not do that, you guys. And that's why when I got the hail damage, right? When the hail damage came from the beyond bound fascia as I was working with it, I was totally surprised. And I will definitely do a blog post about that. But I talked to other people on my Instagram. Um, You can check it out on Instagram. I'm fascia journey. In the comments, we've been talking a lot about this. And some people really feel slighted because maybe they had a kind of fascia that was going to take a long time to heal. And there were going to be stages that they needed to go through. And they didn't read up on it. And now they are mad okay and I'm, I'm not laughing I'm not laughing that they're mad because I get it here's the deal if you do that it doesn't come back you don't get to like be like oh let's act like I didn't do that for three months it just stays in the stage that it's in so I got there I get it I'm gonna make a blog post about it it is not a good feeling so I say this go to my website, educate yourself, go to the fascia blaster for women. If you're a woman, there is a one for men as well. But go on the Facebook groups and really educate yourself about what you're getting into. I think that would be very wise. I just want to remind you, I am still running a contest through the end of May. I'm releasing this now on Tuesday, May 19, and you have until May 31st to enter the contest for a free brand new mini two, a brand new mini two. And all you have to do is text the word blaster to 55444. So you just text the word blaster, B as in boy, L, A, S as in Sam, T as in Tom, E R to the number five five four four four. They will prompt you for your email address. You'll put that in. Then you gotta go run over to your email and click the button inside the email to actually complete the entry process. So that's pretty exciting. You can also register for my website. So jump on the website fashajourney.com. Also have a very active Instagram, been super fun on Instagram, fascia journey on Instagram all one word. As I mentioned next week, we will be talking about my own results from using the fascia blaster on my most prominent cellulite with uh, before and after pictures, process, all that good nitty gritty stuff. Well, this has been really great. This is the first one that I've recorded for YouTube. So you can now see the podcast on YouTube. So Thank you so much for listening, and I will talk to you next week. I'm Summer Esso with Fashion Journey.